and princes should reign, rule in judgment. We've been establishing a couple of different perspectives out of that one verse, and I believe we've established it to the point. But I, I mentioned on the last time we met, the word judgment is the justice. Remember, I said it's the justice of God, God making right what is wrong, and he's going to use a people to do it. That's why you got saved. You didn't get saved to go to heaven. You got saved because God wanted to execute his judgment of justice or his way of doing things in the earth. He wanted to create a species in the earth. That's what the church, the ecclesia is all about. He's raising us up to be an extension of his government. He's raising us up to be an extension of his government because creation itself is waiting on what? The manifestation of the sons of God. Right? Mm -hmm. And we found out out of Isaiah, I mean Psalms 149, 5 through 9, and a couple of other places that there's going to be a people in the earth that's going to bring retribution to the systems that be. Remember? You guys remember? Okay. So, let's go to Psalms 149, 5 to 9. The quicker you get it, the easier I'll be released to flow through the teaching. The quicker that you can acknowledge and know and become a workman in the scriptures, it give me a thoroughfare to be able to increase the amount of information. I can't increase it until you are able to be receptive to it. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. It's not just uh, somebody just having a good time on their bed. It's prophetic language. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Go ahead. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Please, uh, high praises of God where? In their mouth. And a what in their hand? A sword. What type of sword? Sword. What it represents? Okay. Next, which is the Bible or the Word of Spirit. To execute what? Vengeance upon what? The heathen and punishment upon the people. Now, of course, in the Old Testament, this was a literal, physical thing that transpired. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Well, how many know if we're in the New Testament? Therefore, what is the New Testament counterpart to, to that verse? Come on, walk with me, y'all. New Testament counterpart. It's going to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. The New Testament counterpart says... Huh? And power, but we don't what? We don't what? Wrestle with principality, I mean, flesh and blood. That's the counterpart. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. They wrestle with flesh and blood. In the Old Testament, the New Testament, we don't. What do we wrestle with? Come on. Principalities. Uh huh. Rulers of what? Uh huh. Spirits of what? All right. Verse 8. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with the feathers of iron. That's what we're supposed to do. We bind the king with what? Chains. And the nobles, the strong men, with the feathers of iron. What is the iron? Please don't say it's a hard piece of metal. What is the iron? The scriptures. We bind them with the feathers of iron. It's the scriptures. Remember the Old New Testament is called the rod of iron. Right? Verse 9, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all the ones that don't read their Bible, all the people that don't study, all saints. It's the invocation for all of us to be educated in the things of God and the ways of the Lord, right? So there is a corporate expression that needs to take place in the body. We got to be about our father's business doing what? Executing the judgment that's written. That's, that is the rules of engagement as we try to advance the kingdom in the earth against uh, uh, principalities and powers, against the demonic forces, that the whole world lies in darkness under his control. Am I right? Uh, as 1 John 5 and 21 talks about how the, the wicked one has blinded all people. Put them in darkness. But the church has been empowered and deputized and given the authentication through the Holy Spirit, the seal of ownership by the Holy Spirit, the earnest of the Spirit, 
but it's placed within the body, not just the soul of Bosheta, or the had the nine gifts of the Spirit, but to demonstrate the kingdom. Why? Because the kingdom is not what? In word, but what? Okay, power. So the kingdom is power. So we're supposed to be demonstrating the kingdom. Not in word, not in teaching, not in impartation. All those are good vehicles and videos that we use to be endued with power. But the ultimate goal is for us to be empowered to execute the judgment, right? Kings shall reign in righteousness, but princes shall rule in justice or judgment. Right? So whatever was vindicated at the cross cannot be experienced in the earth without the princes, the sons of God. How I many of you got kings and princes? They are the same cloth, am I right? Jesus is the ultimate king, right? And he's the king of what? And the Lord of who? Lord. All right. We're, we're the small K and we're the small L. But we're part of a kingship or in a priest craft. Amen. We're part of that. King priest order. Sons of God. Boy, oh boy. That's what we've been called to do. Y'all understand that? To advance the kingdom in the earth. That is our calling. To adjudicate the principles of the kingdom. That's a, that's a technical legal term. To adjudicate the principles of the kingdom. Not for condemnation. Amen. We're not here to condemn the world. Jesus was sent that the world would be saved. That is our ongoing message. That the world could be saved. You following me? Amen. It's so important. So important. Which is going to bring me to part two of this message. Talking about the justice, the judgment. Now this, this is, I'm going to bring you into a New Testament in a greater clarity so that we can live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age so we won't be uh, intoxicated by everything that's being infiltrated into the world system so we can, amen, so we can remain sober, godly, and righteous so we can be separate in our mentality. We don't live ascetic, which means we just break away from society as we know it but we're being trained under the tutelage of the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. To be sent right back into those systems. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 That's what we've been sent to do, y'all. But go with me over to uh, 2 Corinthians 5. I'm going to license you tonight. Then we're going to go on to the next one. A man should be a high place, but I'm going to license you first. Everybody won't license. I'm gonna license. I want to be anointed of God. I want to find out what my assignment is in the earth. Amen. Yeah. I mean, Y'all know we be thirsty for titles. Come on now. Stop playing. Second Corinthians 5. Everybody there? Verse 19. Let's go to 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are becoming habitable, foundational, transgenerational. We know that word catesis is, is the creation. Amen? 18. And all things are what? Of God. What? All things are who? Of God. Y'all all right tonight? Y'all should have got some job or something. And all things are of God. That's some green tea. All things are of God, that big old screen telling us, all things are of God. God. You have to look at your Bible. <laughs> Who has reconciled us to himself by what? Jesus Christ. And has given to who? Uh, us. The what? The ministry of reconciliation. We forsook this ministry. Because we, we so fixated on ministering to one another. We're looking for, we're loathing for, longing for, notoriety and, and prominence preeminence. But there's a ministry, there's a pulpit that we visit all the time when we step up out of our homes. 
get in our car cars and start riding or however you travel. I hope it's not a horse and buggy, but however you get around. There's an extension of the ministry of reconciliation that has been committed to our trust. That is a part of us ruling in justice. See, we, we, we rule in grace and truth. We rule in mercy and truth. We rule in righteousness and peace. Amen. We, we try to tell them, tell society, you have been reconciled to Christ. That the handwriting that was against you has been nailed, taken out of the way. Mm -hmm. That you don't have to come up to Christ. Christ came down to you. Amen. Am I right? Amen. Did he come down to us? Yes. All other religions try to get us to appease him or come up to his standard. He came down to us. That's why he stooped and wrote in the sand. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. That should be our central message. Mm -hmm. Is to tell the world that all things are of God. You need to be awakened to your true identity. You can be reconciled to Christ. Right? Yeah. Not doing what? Imputing their trespasses unto them. And has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now, some folks, they... We kind of, because we have a little leaven, and all of us have a little leaven in us. Uh, some of our perceptions are a little off, and it really depending on uh, the, the unkempt places, the places that we've had not yet totally yielded to the administration of the kingdom. Some of us will read and say, see, I told you. He ain't holding no sins against us. <laughs> 